uh, the, but the great engineer who is going to occupy most of the last portion of this, this lecture is a Cecil Balmond of the Ume Arab, um, who is another Thompson nut. Born in Sri Lanka, he brings a, a rather different and unconventional perspective. He was head of engineering at Ove Arab in London, and Ove Arab, you remember, I will remind you, uh, built the Brisbane Bridge with a 10 secretary structure using the Blackman's to fuller materials. The sort of thing which um, Cecil Barland is much interested in in Thompson, uh, the famous example of the Nassanarian skeleton from Ernst Heichel, who we saw yesterday, um, in relation to plateau soap bubbles, plateau on the left, uh, determined if you had a tetral, tetrahedral wire cage, the soap bubble adopted that curved tetrahedron at the center of it. The films spontaneously organized themselves into that very beautiful shape. Thompson, unsurprisingly, seized on that and said, ah, yes, the Calimatra, it all these are confirmed. Uh, a curved tetrahedral frame, we've got the same structure at the center. Um, this is very different. One is a soap film, the other is a, is a, is a skeleton of a, of a marine organism. Um, and it becomes again slightly so what, unless you can really do analysis which wasn't available to Thompson. And the artist picked it up, Nam Garbo, the great uh, constructivist uh, uh, sculptor, um, born in Russia, trained as an engineer. Um, he would have learned in, uh, in engineering at the time of optimum or minimum, optimal or minimum structures, which relied upon these sort of skeletal ones. They were beginning to work towards, as Fuller was himself, the, the minimum structure that would give the necessary strength to hold up whatever he wished to hold up. Galbo himself didn't become an engineer, he became an artist, but you see in that wire metal frame and wire strung sculpture, you see the kind of thing he's doing. And just one other aspect of Thompson, which is highly relevant both for Sophia Vitsabiti and particularly for Cecil Balmond, this Thompson's system of transformations using a Cartesian coordinate net, manipulating it, stretching in a systematic, not random way, um, to give different skull shapes of the metamorphosis or the transformation of the species of one fish or skull into another, um, which has become one of Thompson's most famous, um, famous inventions. Um, Cecil Ballon, uh, incredibly innovatory engineer, um, one of the top so three or four in the world. This is the kind of thing he was doing at one point, which is a sort of folding. This is the China TV building in Beijing, uh, which uh, you can see going up on the right. I love that slide, I <coughs> see two mighty dinosaurs in, in conversation. But what is very striking about this is not just that it's an extraordinary structure, it looks improbable, but each one of those lines on the surface of the building actually records, it isn't actually structural, but it records a structural element under, underneath. And the computer design comes up with, not the, what you would do as a standard drawn engineer design, but comes up, and you can see at these maximum points of stress, you've got quite a little fretwork of, of structural members, but not necessarily in the direction you would expect if you were doing orthodox non-computerized analysis, and then of course in the towers it settles down to be a more, more orthodox form. Um, that's my own photograph on the left, which I was in Beijing, which is the most extraordinary, slightly unsettling building. Um, but this is, um, it, it certainly has a rhetoric of its own, and I think if you were doing world's iconic buildings, which I don't know who's actually doing them, um, this beats fair to be one in the future. Uh, Cecil Belmond at Ovea had an advanced geometry group. They were doing non-linear geometry um, using algorithms uh, to generate forms. <coughs> the top two were done from the book which uh, the people got together and published when I retired, and the bottom two the ones he recently sent me. And these are mathematically generated organisms. So the one in the top left looks like a slightly preserved point of air and a kind of seaweed. Um, rather, and two rather menacing creatures at the, at the bottom. But these are generated by computer algorithms and uh, 
uh, this is part of the system of thinking. He's not building designs, obviously, but it's in investigating the parameters of this. Highly computerized, but he's one of the people I mentioned yesterday who always keeps going onto paper and onto hand-driven models. There's a continual dialogue going on between the most simple sketching on paper, saying, let's think about it like this, and then picking up a piece of card and manipulating for even a, a conventional architect's model, then into computer design, then the nonlinear stuff, then it comes back. And it, a building will go through many stages of this dialogue between the instinctive hand eye thing with all this material coordination and feel and the much more abstract algorithms which are buried in the brain of the computer and are not in a sense accessible to us up on, on, on the screen. More recent structures have been working with these. Uh, this is one which is currently nearing completion. This is the Olympic Park Tower in London, uh, done with the sculptor Anish Kapoor. And I'm representing Anish Kapoor by the, uh, the uh, cloud mirror in Chicago, um, one of these great extraordinary public sculptures. <coughs> Kapoor, an Indian sculptor, so we thought of that as an interesting conjunction of an Indian sculptor and a, a Sri Lankan engineer working together. That he's very interested in these continuous surfaces, the sort of media strips and the, um, these particular surfaces. This is based upon a drop of mercury. Um, and between them, they've come up with this extraordinary and I think not entirely lovable structure uh, for, uh, for the Olympic Park with a revolving restaurant for this people's design in the Olympic style and frame. The one on the left is what in the old days they call an artist's impression. Maybe not called such, but uh, um, just to show it's a real building that's going up, there is a, a deep structural bit which is uh, going into place.